redeemed, rehabilitated, and real entertaining. This is the Carl Jackson Podcast. All right, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show Podcast on this Wednesday edition. Guys, I was going to talk to you. I had all these ideas set for today's show. Just bantering throughout my mind. Uh, and then something really hit me. Something struck me yesterday. I was watching Tucker Carlson yesterday. He interviewed a uh, one of the Capitol Police officers who was basically never told uh, or never listened to on his radio when he was calling out for help. Uh, there was just no help available from his superiors. It was the weirdest thing. The Capitol Police were totally unprepared. That lets us know that the higher ups had something to do with that. I believe it was staged. But something happened that was even more troubling than that. Senator Chuck Schumer sat on the floor or stood on the floor of Congress and basically attacked Tucker uh, Tucker Carlson of Fox News. Guys, this is purely unconstitutional. This guy is a communist. And and, and I'm, I'm going to prove that to you through the Constitution. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for some program messaging. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I know what I said was pretty. uh, It it seems as though I'm being hyperbolic. I don't believe that I am. Uh, What we witnessed yesterday, the most damning or the biggest story, I think, from yesterday uh, is what we saw take place on the Senate floor with Senate minority or Senate majority leader Chuck Schumer. This is scary. We are living in a different time. What what I'm going to do is outline the duties of the Senate. And when I outline the duties of the Senate, and guys, you know this by watching this this show, when I outline the duties of the Senate, it's going to make it's going to make it emphatically clear to you that the left has turned in or the Democrat Party has turned into a communist party. Uh, uh, No one should be cheering, regardless of what you feel about the J6 videos. And by the way, I mean, Tucker Carlson is running those things unedited. Like the other, um, unlike the other news organizations did, where they chopped up the video, but this guy is being made out to be a villain. Maybe it's you that's the villain. It's certainly Chuck Schumer. It is certainly Chuck Schumer. I think what we witnessed, ta- uh, what happened or took place on the floor of the Senate, was one of the clearest indicators that I've seen. That the Democrat Party, Chuck Schumer, who used to be seen as somewhat of a moderate, that they have just gone completely communist. That AOC, I, 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 I don't know what's going on. This party has turned completely, completely to the left. All right, guys, before I get started and go in depth on this, I want to make sure uh, that you support the sponsors here uh, because the sponsors help this podcast and hopefully they help you out too with their products. They are American products. I want to talk to you about Pure Health. If you're looking to uh, to ignite your fat burning metabolism, you want to boost your energy and transform how you look and feel, especially as summer is coming up here, you must start taking care of your liver. Fatty liver affects 100 million Americans. This is why so many of us struggle with weight gain and low energy levels. Um, It's manufactured in the USA. It's approved by American doctors. It contains 12 powerful botanicals that are clinically proven to recharge and protect your liver. Try Liver Health Formula risk-free and receive a free bottle of nano-powered omega-3 to keep your heart healthy. Claim your special offer today. All you have to do is go to getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl, getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl, getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to play to you this video of this communist, the Senate majority leader of the uh, of the Senate. And, and I'm, I'm not saying this to be hyperbolic. This is where we are. I heard Dennis Prager talking about this uh, just briefly on his show the other day. And and frankly, I've made mention of the same thing before, but Dennis Prager always puts things so eloquently and he he makes them clear. I think, and, and I'm just paraphrasing, all right? Uh, but basically, a lot of people on the right are, are, are scared to be called extremists for whatever reason. They're scared of what other people might think of them. We, we, we say left-wing extremists, right-wing, right-wing extremists. And the truth of the matter is there aren't a bunch of right-wing extremists in America. What's extreme about wanting the rule of law? What's extreme about wanting babies to be born? What's extreme about 
respecting the rule of law and wanting free speech uh, and no censorship from big tech or politicians. What's extreme about wanting to keep more of the money that you work for in your pocket? What's extreme about wanting closed borders where only legal immigrants can apply and get citizenship uh, in the United States? What's extreme about wanting a military that isn't talking about men being women and uh, and how women can be uh, how women can become men and racially dividing people? Uh, what's wrong with wanting a military that's just strong enough to kill our enemies and break stuff when we need them to? What's extreme about wanting natural? fuels to reign again in America, fossil fuels, or if you if you really believe in the global warming, man-made global warming, uh, what's the matter with nuclear energy? What's extreme about any of these positions that most conservatives hold? I think a lot of conservatives, frankly, are scared to speak up about their beliefs because they're scared to be called names, and we got to get over that crap. Republicans are an extreme. The Democrat Party is extreme. They are extreme. They are radicals. And Chuck Schumer proved it yesterday. Let's go ahead and roll this tape, por favor, Gabe. This is Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, a senator, attacking a, uh, a, a journalist in Tucker Carlson. This is, uh, guys, we have crossed the Rubicon. I don't typically use that language, but I'm going to use it today. This, this is insane. I want you to listen to this video. To me, to me, beyond the Capitol Police officer who was calling out for help from his superiors, never got the help that he uh, that he called for. He was even fired because he put on a MAGA hat. He put on a MAGA hat because he found out that 10 or so of his fellow police officers were stuck at the top of the Capitol building, stranded. He wanted to wait, make his way through the crowd. He wanted to de-escalate any, uh, uh, you know, tensions or whatever. Someone put a cap on him. He went ahead and said, hey, could I keep it? Uh, because he wanted to make sure that things stayed copacetic, that people around him stayed calm. So he wanted to act like he was a part of the group. The guy was fired for it. That was a big story. Capitol Police were totally unprepared, totally caught off guard. They had no clue. What was going on that day? They didn't know that there might be violent threats on, et cetera. We got video of Ray Epps in the crowd. He lied uh, to Congress about his whereabouts uh, during the J6 protest. We've got all of that. But despite all of that, that we will show you the most creepy thing that I heard yesterday when I sat back and thought about it was Chuck Schumer. Gabe, let's roll the tape, por favor. Guys, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch this for yourself. Uh, watch this for yourselves. The Carl Jackson Show on YouTube. Subscribe to, please, 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 please subscribe to my um, my social media uh, pages. All you have to do is find me at The Carl Jackson Show. Again, YouTube, The Carl Jackson Show. Rumble, if you prefer, The Carl Jackson Show. Let's go ahead and roll the tape, por favor, Gabe. Last night, millions of Americans tuned in to one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen on cable television. By diving deep into the waters of conspiracy and cherry picking from thousands of hours of security footage, Mr. Carlson told the bold faced lie that the Capitol attack, which we all saw with our own eyes, was somehow not an attack at all. To say January 6th was not violent is a lie, a lie pure and simple. I don't think I've ever seen a primetime cable news anchor manipulate his viewers the way Mr. Carlson did last night. I don't think I've ever seen an anchor treat the American people and American democracy with such disdain. Fox News, Rupert Murdoch, tell Carlson not to run a second segment of lies. You know it's a lie. You've admitted it's a lie. And Speaker McCarthy is every bit as culpable as Mr. Carlson. Tell Fox News, tell Fox News not to run Tucker Carlson's show, essentially. Not to run the story on J6. Guys, um, there, there are a lot of headlines that I'm going uh, to get to, all right? 
Two of four, the kidnapped Americans we talked about yesterday. We briefly spoke about yesterday. Two were found dead. Uh, two are alive um, and have uh, managed to uh, make it back to the United States of America. Uh, thank God. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that, all right? Uh, Press Secretary, uh, the uh, not-so-notorious Kareem Jean-Pierre, talks about fentanyl death. She goes back and forth with Peter Ducey, uh, talks about how because of the work that Biden has done, um, the the uh, uh, fentanyl deaths, you know, border crises, the border crisis, they're at those numbers are at historic lows. Just an out and out lie, uh, gaslighting you guys. Uh, SoFi files a lawsuit to continue student loan repayments. We'll talk about that. Biden supports bipartisan legislation aimed at banning TikTok. I'm going to tell you guys, I read some of this stuff. They can't even get this right. I'm talking about Republicans and Democrats. They don't even know how to help. They don't. They're. Our Congress is so incompetent, they don't even know how to ban TikTok. I'm I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't know why we would trust these politicians. The Constitution, listen to me, guys. The Constitution is worthless. It is absolutely worthless unless you hold these politicians accountable. What we witnessed from Chuck U. Schumer, had a tip, Rush Limbaugh. What we witnessed from Chuck U. Schumer. Guys, I didn't even, I, I, I got to tell you this. I got to make a confession. Gabe, I don't know if I should make this confession. All right, it's too late. Uh, one, of the, one of the things, uh, actually a couple of things that God saved me from. Uh, we, when I was younger, I, I, had a, I had a really bad temper. All right. Uh, very, you know, very quick temper. And I, and, and, and I cussed as bad as gay. No, just kidding. Uh, but I, I, I cussed worse than a sailor. I just like every other word out of my mouth was a cuss word. And it was it, 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 it was uh, it did. It never bothered me. And then once uh, once God saved me and when Christians say saved, they mean saved from the wrath of God. So you repent of your sins. Uh, you you turn, you know, you stop doing a lot of the things that you were doing. It doesn't mean that you don't fall back into sin or you don't slip up and do some of the things you did in the past that you know are wrong. But now you know they're wrong and you try to self-correct. All right. Uh, because the we we believe the Holy Spirit corrects you of your sin uh, and you want to walk away from that sin. It doesn't mean that it happens. Uh, overnight. But nonetheless, what I used to do is I used to cuss like a sailor. And once I got saved, it was ironic. My temper went away almost instantaneously. Uh, and also, I just had this disgust. I, 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 I couldn't stand people that cussed and I couldn't stand cussing anymore. All of a sudden, it felt bad. I felt bad when I did it. I did not like cussing. Guys, I got to tell you, I, 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 I don't say I, I don't cuss like a sailor. But in the last couple of years since Biden has been in office, I've said a lot more cuss words than I ever thought I'd say. More cuss words in the last two years than I thought I'd say in my entire life. And 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 forgive me for that. You know, I, I ask God forgiveness. You know, it's for some of you that may not be a big deal. For me, it is a big deal. All right. But it really, it 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 really bothers me. But again, the biggest story to me yesterday is that Chuck Schumer uh, straight up turned into a communist or displayed his communism on the floor of the Senate. And this isn't a major story. This isn't going to be a major story. This is going to be a video that people watch and pass over. Well, not here. Not here. Right here on the Carl Jackson Show podcast, we're going to talk to you about freedom. We are going to fight to restore this Constitution, the best document that God has ever given man. We are going to fight to restore the middle class, the middle class in which the left is systematically and the left and the Democrat Party are synonymous. They're systematically destroying it. They're systematically destroying it. We need to stop being concerned about what the left calls us. If you're a conservative, if you're a Republican, if you're a constitutionalist, because what we witnessed was communism. So I decided to do something a little differently today. And I'm not even sure, frankly, that I'll get to all these other things. But Gabe is on the ready because we do have other videos for you that I do want to play. But what I saw with Chuck Schumer troubled me so much. I just... I, I I I went to this this document. I, I'm not sure. Can you see that on camera? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure that Chuck U. Schumer has ever heard of it, but it's called the Constitution of the United States. And let me say this to you out there, you the voters out there. This 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 document is worthless unless you hold the people like Chuck U. Schumer accountable. That's for all of us. That includes me too. We've got to hold these people accountable. So I just started reading through it. I started reading through Article 1. Article 1 breaks down the responsibilities of the House and of the Senate, you know, the, the requirements to become a uh, representative. 
uh, in the House or a, a or a representative in the Senate. And, and and so I just wanted to go through just some of the things with you. And I just wanted to read some of the things because I, I what struck me is when I listened to uh, Senator Chuck U. Schumer uh, and when I, I, I'm saying Chuck U. Schumer in part because, yes, I love Rush Limbaugh, but I think I know why Rush Limbaugh cut, called Chuck U. Schumer uh, Chuck U. Schumer because Chuck U. Schumer just gave the First Amendment the middle finger yesterday. He's the Senate Majority Leader. All right, so <clears throat> Article 1, Section 3 of the Constitution is where I started, and I encourage you guys to go there and to read it for yourself, uh, yourselves and to familiarize yourselves with the Constitution as often uh, as you possibly can so that these people cannot lie to you and so that these people cannot steal your power away from you. Here's a... Here's something that I want you to understand. You realize that Chuck U. Schumer works for Tucker Carlson. Oh, Carl, he's not employed by Fox. No, he's a civil servant. He works for Tucker Carlson. He works for you. He works for I. He does not have the authority to tell us what to say. Senators, uh, two senators from each state. All right. These are just the bas basics. A term of six years. One third of the Senate is up for reelection every couple of years. Uh, you have your first class, second class, third class. Uh, it, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that they'll be swapped out. Obviously, that's up to you uh, because you vote for the senators uh, in your state. Uh, they must be 30 years old, a U.S. citizen for nine years and must be, when elected, an inhabitant of the state in which uh, he or she was chosen. Uh, the VP of the United States, that will be Kamala Harris. She acts as the president of the Senate. However, her vote is not needed unless a tiebreaker is needed on legislation. The Senate alone has the power to try impeachment. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States acts as the judge. It takes two-thirds of the Senate in order to remove a president. Each house shall keep a journal of its proceedings. That's in Section 5. In Section 7, all bills for raising revenue must originate in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments as on other bills. And then I read further, and, and, and it was just too much to jot down, so I just want to go through this briefly. Again, I'm going through Article 1 of our Constitution because I, I, I sat there and I thought, I, I, I don't think that the senator uh the, the 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 senate majority leader has the power to tell a news organization uh to the uh, to, to 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 tell a news organization to uh, stifle the speech of their uh, of their number one show I, I don't I don't think there's constitutional authority for that and unless you know that and unless you get on the phone and tell your senators, this is a freaking outrage that he did this. We will not be heard. This Constitution is only as good as uh, the voters. I, I, it's as simple as that. If you don't hold these politicians accountable, this Constitution does not matter. Because as Chuck Schumer did yesterday, they will run all over it. All right, so I'm getting so hot, I can't even find uh, Article 1, Section 8. All right, so let me go to Article 1, Section 8. The Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises in order to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and the general welfare of the United States. That does not mean welfare recipients, government cheese for all of you out there. All right. But uh, but all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the entire United States. To borrow money on the credit of the United States to regulate commerce. This is this are their do. This is the duties of the Congress uh, to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes to establish uh, a uniform rule of naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States. We have no rule of law when it comes to uh, naturalization and the borders right now to coin money, regulate the value of the money and a foreign coin and fix the stat standard of weights and measures to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the securities and current coin of the United States to establish post offices and post roads. I understand some of this stuff may be outdated, but um, it, it is all still relevant here because human nature is relevant to promote the progress of science 
are always relevant to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme uh, su- inferior to the Supreme Court to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the laws of nations. So far, nothing here that says the Senate or even the House of Representatives has the power to tell a journalist to shut up and not report the news. Nothing here so far. This is the Senate majority leader to declare war, grant letters of a marquee and reprisal and make rules concerning captures on land and water to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Hmm. To provide and maintain a Navy, uh, to make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. Listen to this. This is why, okay, I want you, <laughs> I want you guys to hear this. This is in section, article one, section eight. To provide for calling forth the militia, listen to this, to execute the laws of the union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. I'm going to stop for a second because I want to talk to you about a sponsor, and I'm going to come right back to that point because this has or relates specifically to the J6 political prisoners, in my opinion. But first, before I go on, let me talk to you about food shortage and my friends at 4 That's the number 4 A food shortage could be coming our way. Yes, even in the U.S., experts are saying, uh, for God's sakes, Biden is in the White House. Um, also, there's drought, inflation, and even new policies, of course, by Biden that are, uh, uh, that, that are pushing America's food supply near its breaking point. That's why survival food is more important than ever. Go to fourpatriots.com. You can create your own stockpile. It's not ordinary food. It lasts for 25 years. It's survival superfood, all right? It's hand-packed in a family-owned facility that has 200 employees providing 200 American jobs, all right? The kits are compact. They're sturdy. They're water-resistant. They stack very easily. And the meals, whether it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, are ready in just 20 minutes. All you have to do is add boiling water, simmer, and serve. Right now, you can go to 4 That's the number four, please, 4 Use the promo code Carl for 10% off of your first purchase. Guys, stock up. Seriously, I don't know if we'll have a, a natural disaster or another Biden disaster, but just make sure that your family is prepared. I always recommend that you have some of the normal foods that you eat in stock too, maybe 30 days worth water, you know, snacks. But in case things, you know, the stuff hits the fan, so to speak, make sure you go to fourpatriots.com and you get yourself some superfood. Again, First-time purchasers, use my name, get 10% off. Also, this includes a three-month survival kit. You'll get a year-long guarantee plus free shipping on kits that are over 97 bucks. They're called 4 for a reason. A portion of every sale goes out to help charities that help out veterans and their families. So make sure that you're prepared and your family is prepared, but you can also bless the families of veterans. And I absolutely love that. All you have to do is go to 4 Again, use the promo code Carl to get 10% off of your first purchase. That's 4 promo code Carl, 4Patriots.com, 4Patriots.com, the number 4, Patriots.com. All right, picking up where we left off. And, uh, and again, Gabe will get the next video ready, but because Speaker Kevin McCarthy defended giving Tucker Carlson the J6 videos, and I'm so glad that he did. This is all about transparency. But I want to go back to this. I'm following up. I'm in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. All right, so the the uh, Congress has the power to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union. Listen to this to suppress insurrections and repel invasions. You understand how dangerous it is for Senator, uh, uh, for Senate uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to be talking about J6 in terms of uh, of an insurrection, as well as the news media to be talking about uh, J6 in terms of an insurrection. It was not an insurrection. There weren't a bunch of armed people. The news media cannot provide, even the mainstream media, ask, look at CNN, look at MSNBC. When have any of them provided evidence that there were armed people with pistols or, or long guns out there shooting up people at the Capitol? They have not done it because it wasn't an insurrection. Did some people act disorderly? Did some people break the law? Yes. And some of those people are being punished 
And some of those people, actually, the majority of them are not being treated fairly. But it's dangerous to use this term insurrection when it comes to what I believe to be political prisoners that uh, were mostly peaceful protesters on J6. Why? Because it says here that the Congress has the power to call forth the militia to execute the laws of the union, to suppress insurrection and repel invasions. We do have an invasion at our southern border. Congress is enjoying Joe Biden and the Democrats aren't doing jack squat about it, but they are calling people insurrectionists, which will allow them to use the military to suppress them. This is scary. To provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the United States, reserving to the states respectively the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the discipline uh, prescribed by Congress. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district, not exceeding 10 miles square, as may by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress uh, become the seat of the government of the U.S. and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. I still have not gotten to the point where the Constitution gives the Senate majority leader the power to tell a news organization that they need to censor their top show. Still have not seen that in the Constitution. This Constitution is worthless unless you hold these people accountable. What Chuck, what we saw on the floor of the Senate yesterday was scary and it was disgusting. Lost all respect for Chuck Schumer. I used to think even though he was a liberal, he seemed to be a decent guy. This was a guy that was known to do matchmaking in his office. You know, all these little puff pieces that he used to run about Chuck, uh, run about Chuck Schumer. He was a liberal, but he had some common sense. Since AOC and the far left are running the Democrat Party right now and, and, and pouring money into races and all these interests that these radicals on the left have, be, there aren't radicals on the right, I'm sorry. They don't exist in the United States of America. It's just a flat out lie, a flat out lie. But <clears throat> this guy's a radical. Chuck Schumer is a radical now. So they uh, to, uh, they have the power to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying in into execution the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or any department or officer thereof. Section 9, Article 1, the migration or importation of such persons, persons as any of the states now existing shall think proper to admit shall not be prohibited by the Congress prior to the year 1808. But a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation, not exceeding $10 for each person. Obviously, it'd be higher now. The, pri uh, the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. Pause. Pause. I always hear this writ of habeas corpus, and I'm just being honest with you. I forget what it means 90% of the time. Uh, so I have to look it up because, thank God, we live in the United States where it's still somewhat free anyway. Uh, we can turn on our phones, and when Google isn't censoring it, uh, things that they don't mind talking about, uh, we can talk about them. So I think this stuff is very important for us to just know what is in our Constitution. So we know when a communist is right in front of our face. Chuck Schumer is a communist now. All right. He's a radical leftist now. That's what he is. That's what he is. All right. So let's so listen to this. The privilege of writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require. Why are the J6 mostly peaceful protesters being held as political uh, political prisoners? Well, because they're saying that that was a rebellion. They're saying that that was an invasion at the Capitol building. So what is habeas corpus? Habeas corpus, any of several. A common law, this according to Merriam-Webster, writs issued to bring a party before a court or judge, especially um, or the right of a citizen to obtain a writ of habeas corpus as a protection against illegal imprisonment. 
All right, Carl, still not getting you. Okay, good. The, uh, well, not good, but here's the literal meaning of habeas corpus is, quote, you should have the body, close quote. That means the judge or court should and must have any person who is being detained brought forward so that the legality of that person's detention can be assessed. You realize that some of these people in jail for the mostly peaceful protests on J6 have not even been able to stand in front of a judge with their own bodies in person for 24 freaking months. That is anti-American. This, we're witnessing the breakdown of America. The left is systematically destroying, systematically destroying America. I could go on through this. Um, no bill of attainder of S ex post facto uh, shall be passed. That was another one. Bill of attainder. I was like, bill of attainder, bill of attainder, bill of attainder. Uh, does that mean, I, you know, what, what does that mean exactly? I wasn't, I wasn't sure. So, I, you know, I, I looked that up as well. A bill of attainder, also known as an act of attainder, a writ of attainder, or bill of penalties, is an act of a legislature declaring a person or a group of people guilty of some crime and punishing them often without a trial. So by calling this a rebellion, by calling this invasion, by calling this an insurrection, these people, Chuck Schumer and the left, are unfairly treating the J6 protesters. They are imprisoning them. And they're scared as hell as Tucker Carlson because Tucker Carlson is making the point that all of these names, that these people are being called invaders, insurrectionists, rebellion, you know, this great rebellion, whatever they're calling them. It's an outright lie. And these people are being found out. These people are despicable. These people are evil. They are anti-American. These people on the left, these people in mainstream media, Chuck Schumer, Chuck U. Schumer. Thank you, Rush Limbaugh. Chuck U. Schumer. Chuck U. Schumer. I mean that with all my heart. Chuck U. You see what I did there, Gabe? That takes real skill. That takes real skill. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. No tax or duty should be laid on articles of export. Oh, no capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless in proportion to the census or enumeration herein before directed to be taken. Hmm, how are we going to do that with all these illegals coming in? Uh, no preference shall be given by any regulation of commerce or revenue to the ports of one state over, over those of another, nor shall vessels bound to or from one state be obliged to enter clear or pay duties in another. All right, so... um. Let me skip down. All right, actually, I don't need to. I'm almost done here. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law and a regular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. Uh, it goes on to say no title of nobility shall be granted by the U.S. No person uh, holding any office or profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of the Congress, except of any present emolument, office, or title of any kind, whatever, from any king, prince, or foreign state. Section 10 of Article 1. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confeder confederation, grant letters, or marquee, or repri and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin, a tender in payment of debts, uh, pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts, or grant any title of nobility. No state shall, without the consent of the Congress, lay any impost or duties on imports or exports, except with uh, what may be absolutely necessary for executing uh, its inspection laws and the net produce all of all duties and impulse laid by any state on imports or exports shall be for the use of the Treasury of the U.S. And all such laws shall be subject to the revision and control of the Congress. The last paragraph, bringing Article 1 uh, to close. So you know the role of the House of Representatives and the Senate. And still, still, I have not. I'm on the last. It could be here. I'm on the last paragraph. All right. Art 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 Article 1. I, I'm in Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, the last paragraph of it. So perhaps, perhaps, because I have not read it yet. So perhaps in this paragraph, it says that the Senate Majority Leader has the power to censor journalists in America. Uh, maybe it says that there. Maybe 
Maybe somehow it's connected to the First Amendment, something that I missed. You know, maybe I'm missing connecting the dots. So let's read the last paragraph of Article 1 uh, together, Section 10 of the Constitution, uh, to see if Chuck U. Schumer has the authority to tell Fox News to censor their journalists. Let's see if it's here together. It says no state shall without the consent of Congress lay any duty of tonnage, keep troops or ships of war in time of peace, enter into any agreement or compact with another state or with a foreign power or engage in war unless actually invaded or in such imminent danger as will not admit of delay. Nothing about Tucker Carlson there. Weird. Weird. Guys, we're being run by freaking communists. Now, Kevin McCarthy, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, to his credit, uh, he has uh, so far, it seems to me, uh, held up to the promises that he made uh, with uh, with uh, a lot of those uh, Republicans and conservatives uh, that uh, were determined to hold his feet to the fire so that we, the people, could be heard. Uh, Kevin McCarthy has been doing a pretty good job of that. There are more things that I'd like to see Republicans do. I'll save that for a later date. But I do want you to hear this audio of Speaker Kevin McCarthy defending uh, giving the J6 tapes to Tucker Carlson to go through. Now, keep this in mind. All of these media outlets, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, all of these freaking whiners had the opportunity for two years because it is public information. It is the House of Representatives. It is the Senate. It is the Capitol building, you know, the one that we the people pay for. Uh, so we do have the right to see what is in those videos that they were trying to keep from us. Now, any of these media organizations, which proves they are fake media, as Donald Trump has said, any one of these organizations had the opportunity to ask for these tapes themselves. I suspect with a FOIA request, they did not do so. You, do, do you understand that? For two years, so-called journalists at MSNBC, at CNN, ABC, CBS, all of these people had the same power to ask or authority to ask for these tapes, and they didn't, they didn't want to. They were willing to listen to the liars on the J6 committee as, you know, and, and not do any, uh, any investigation. This alone should make you tune out, should make you want to tune out to CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS. They should all be bankrupt because they're not reporters anymore. They are the Democrat. They're Democratic propagandists. That's what these organizations have become. All right. So here's uh, here's Speaker McCarthy real quick. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, because of the footage that you gave Tucker Carlson last night, he went on and said this was a mostly peaceful chaos, as he said. He downplayed Brian Sicknick's death, said it was not related to January 6th, said this was not an insurrection. Do you regret giving him this footage so he could whitewash the events of that day? No. Um, I, I said at the very beginning, transparency. And so what I wanted to produce for everybody is exactly what I said, that people could actually look at it and see what's gone on that day. So. But why, but, 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 but Mr. Speaker, do you agree with this portrayal of what happened that day? Look, each person can come up with their own conclusion, but I, what I just wanted to make sure is I had transparency. Do you believe because I know in CNN, I mean, I had here where you guys actually broke where we were. This was a secret location, Fort McLaren. I don't know if you got concerned by that. I don't even know from... Uh, point of view of security, if we could ever be taken there again. But when you broke that at CNN, that was a real concern to a lot of people. I had a real concern also when I wanted to make sure transparency Look, um, The officer's death is tragic and uh, any time an officer is passed uh, in this situation. Uh, I want to make sure they're protected. I want to make sure the transparency is, goes forward. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, was this in any way part of the deal that you made no, to win the speakership no. to specifically give the content to No, the, to answer, the answer is no. And if, uh, if you follow, I, I'm not sure if you were there the times before, I got asked the question um, in a press what I would do in the process. I've watched on January 6th committee how it was only politically driven. Now, on the January 6th committee, you couldn't know the, the minority side wasn't allowed to put people on. Um, and I just thought it was fair if someone asked me the question. Just transparency. So what I tried to do is be able to release the information, which we'll do to everybody. I worked with the Capitol Police. I asked them for any clips 
on the way that they had concern with the security level. Only one of the clips did, and we were able to change that. An interesting thing the Capitol Police told us when we went through this is that January 6th never asked them about that, the security. So that's why they showed, unfortunately, President, uh, our Vice President Pence when he was... Let, let, me, let, me, let me hold this tape just, uh, just, just, just for the sake of, listen, I... That this this audio has run a little long. I want to make sure that we're complying with copyrights. This we pulled this from the Daily Wire. Uh, okay, all right. So we have twenty seconds left. Let, let, let's go ahead and finish running this tape. But yeah, I, I do want to make this point real quick. Uh, for the mainstream media, uh, transparency is kryptonite. Get, can you imagine? You you want this is why you please tune into shows like this. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you go to get your podcast, guys. I need your subscriptions here. I need you to watch. I need you to subscribe. I need you to share this podcast with family, with friends, with foes. I listen. I'm going to I'm going to bring you the truth. Uh, I'm going to bring you my opinion. Sometimes it's just my opinion. I'm going to read you the stories. I'm going to give you the stats. I'm going to give you the facts. I want you to share. I'm asking you, humbly asking you to share this podcast with everyone you know. I am fighting for you. We are fighting together. Like Trump said, I will be your warrior. I'm a warrior for Judeo-Christian values. I'm a warrior for the middle class. Subscribe to this podcast. Go to YouTube now. Subscribe to this podcast, The Carl Jackson Show. Follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, The Carl Jackson Show. I'm on Instagram, The Carl Jackson Show. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Gitter. I'm on True Social, The Carl Jackson Show, or at Carl Jackson Show. You can find me at either address, all right? So please subscribe. Please subscribe. It's important because we've just found out that we have a Senate majority leader that are straight up communists and look at the way these people are asking the questions. Let me, let me just read this before we go back to the video. Um, this is the first question that Speaker McCarthy got, and I quote, because of the footage, had tip to uh, Daily Wire, because of the footage that you gave Tucker Carlson last night, he went on and said this was a mostly peaceful chaos, as he said. He downplayed Brian Sicknick's death, said it was not related to January 6th, that this was not an insurrection. This was CNN's Manu Raju, who is a complete and utter fraud. I don't even know the guy, but this question is so freaking asinine and so loaded. He has just proved that he's not a journalist. He has just proved that he is a complete, he's, he's completely biased. He's a left-wing nut job. Do you regret giving him those tapes so he could whitewash the events of the day? Now, this fool is the one wa whitewashing it. Brian Sicknick, the time in which, and Gabe, I forgot to give you that video. Brian Sicknick, the time in which the media was claiming, the J6 committee claimed that he was killed by these so-called insurrectionists, either by sniffing too much bear spray or with a, a, a canister, of some oxygen canister or something, fire extinguisher or something, uh, the guy was walking around in the Capitol directing people of where to go. They could follow through these little, those, you know, those red velvet, what are those things called that you see at the movies sometimes, Gabe, those little red velvet freaking uh, things that keep you in line. I don't even know what they're called, but you guys know what I'm talking about. You go to any place uh, where you have to wait in line, and oftentimes they have these little red velvet ropes that hook onto these little stands and people, you know, walk through them. Uh, that's what Brian Sicknick was doing. The time in which they said he was dead, he was alive in the Capitol, ushering people around. This fool, CNN's Manu Raju, didn't even watch the video for himself. This idiot is asking questions of the Speaker of the House who, and he obviously hasn't even seen the video. He's been told what to say. He's a loyal communist. Let's finish up this one here, Gabe. President, uh, our Vice President Pence, when he was uh, being escorted out, they used my office on the escort where he went out. They never asked the Capitol Police if that's showing security clearance that they shouldn't, which they didn't. They didn't ask me as well. Okay. All right. So 
And the guy just wants transparency. So now we know for the mainstream media, I'm writing this down because sometimes I say stuff that's just brilliant. And I'm like, Carl, you got to write that stuff down. So the people that follow you can tweet it later or retweet it later. When you tweet it, make sure you follow me on social media. The Carl Jackson Show. By the way, uh, before we go on, I do want to talk to you about my pillow, Guys, my pillow, Mike Lindale at MyPillow, again, all of these companies, whether it's Pure Health, whether it's MyPillow, whether it's the number four, Patriots.com, these are American companies providing American products, American jobs, and they're quality products, by the way. So now, right now, uh, my pillow. Uh, if you thought it couldn't get any better, it has gotten better. Uh, you still have the original feel from the original my pillow, but now there's this new technology that has made it even better. The my pillow 2.0 has the patented adjusted feel, the original my pillow, and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature regulating thread. The my pillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and the coolest pillow you'll ever own. God, guys, I can say that with conviction. I sleep on it every night. I absolutely love it. I did not think they, I doubt it though. I, I got to admit, Gabe, this, I know this sounds bad, but I'm making a confession here on air. I doubted them when they said they came out with my pillow 2.0 uh, as a young, devastated man that lost the pillow that he loved sleeping on as a teenager and into adulthood. Yes, yes, Gabe, I may need to get counseling for that. But I lost the pillow. It took me years to find a pillow that I loved. And I love the original My Pillow. But, you know, I tried it, right? I tried My Pillow 2.0 and I was like, Mike, I don't think you're going to do any better. I don't know why you would screw up a good thing. He didn't. My Pillow 2.0 is even better. If you can imagine it. So right now, go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener square at the top of the page. Enter my name, Carl, C-A-R-L, or give them a call, 800-858-0263. That is 800-858-0263 to get your MyPillow 2.0. Oh, by the way, it's buy one, get one free. You can't beat that with a bat. 10-year warranty, 60-day money-back guarantee. You will not be disappointed. And you can browse the website. There are a plethora of deals available up to 70% off. All you have to do is use my name, Carl, C-A-R-L. So MyPillow.com. Thank you, guys. MyPillow.com, ForPatriots.com, PureHealth.com. And at Pure Health, make sure you uh, you use GetLiverHealth.com forward slash Carl. GetLiverHealth.com forward slash Carl to get your product, uh, to get your product there. ForPatriots.com. Uh, use my name as well, Carl, to get your product there. All right, good stuff. Now, all right, so we played the video of uh, of Speaker McCarthy. We played the video of, man, I got so many videos today. Gabe has, a uh, Gabe, Gabe doesn't normally work, but today he's actually being forced to work. So we're, we're uh, no, just kidding. Just kidding. He puts in a lot of work. Guys, this this podcast, it, it takes, it's so different uh, from regular radio. I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting the hang of it. But it took some adjusting to. I mean, I'm a guy that came from live radio. Uh, I've been in live radio I, on on and off for about eight years. Uh, loved being on live radio. Still love it whenever I sit in for people, uh, you know, uh, at the answer Orlando.com. Love my buddies on radio. Uh, and uh, radio is just my world, live radio. So podcasting just feels weird because right now I know Gabe is in my ear, right? Uh, but I'm sitting in a room all by my lonesome in front of a camera. Uh, by my lonesome, and and and, and it's totally different. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gabe. I really appreciate that. Uh, that's how I will respond if I'm a Democrat. Uh, but since I'm not, I'll just say thanks, Gabe. All right. So, but uh, but, but but no. So it, it it takes some adjusting to, and 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 I'm starting to feel more comfortable. Uh, and some of you guys are responding to this podcast. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate your encouragement. Uh, sometimes I even appreciate the jabs. It's okay. I will take them all. I just appreciate you listening. All right. So now let me go. What else do I want to talk about here? I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Oh, um, just real, just real quick. Last video I want to play. This is of Ray Epps. And we don't have the video of Brian Sicknick. I keep forgetting a video. We keep forgetting to look for it. Anyway, but Brian Sicknick was walking around the Capitol unharmed, not dead, when the J6 committee lied and said he was dead. Uh, when news media outlets lied and said he was dead, he was not. He was ushering uh, peaceful Trump uh, Trump supporters 
um, throughout the, the the Capitol, you know, just doing his job. He was he was never even in the line of fire, so to speak, or in any danger. The guy had on his regular outfit. He didn't he didn't even have on riot gear, guys. They just lied. The J6 committee just lied. Frankly, the, the fact that these people can just lie to the American people and not be taken to jail and handcuffed. I think Liz Cheney, I think Ron, uh, uh, what's his name? I forget, Adam Kins. I, I think they should be perp walked. I know they're not going to be, uh, but you and I would be. Uh, it, 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 it's insane. The government has way too much power. These people have way too much power. And now we know we've been watching political theater for probably quite some time. Not just with the J6 committee, frankly. All right, so here is Ray Epps. Remember that guy, Ray Epps? Uh, people always, like, this is the guy that was literally trying to encourage people, trying to stoke uh, 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 stoke the flames of violence, wanted people to bombard the Capitol. Uh, and people were asking, is is this guy a UC? Is this guy an undercover? Uh, you know, he, he, he claimed in... Uh, under oath that, uh, you know, after he had sent a certain text message to a friend or family member or something, he left the Capitol premises. Oh, no, he didn't. They've got him on video. And for some reason, the J6 committee can't seem to find this guy or be bothered with this guy or want to hear uh, from this guy. Uh, actually, they did. They're, they're, he did testify. So I'm wrong to say that. But they didn't want to hear anything else from him. They didn't arrest him. It's really weird. Here's Here's some more footage of Ray Epps that CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS did not share with you. They they didn't even ask for. They they don't you guys find this odd that the media isn't even curious that they would buy into everything the J6 committee said? Isn't that just odd? People that claim to be journalists Here's the video. Let's go ahead and run it, run it, por favor, Gabe. One of the enduring mysteries of January 6th is the role that intelligence and law enforcement agencies played in the events of that day. We know there was some number of undercover federal agents in the crowd at the Capitol. Officials have since admitted that under oath. But what exactly were they doing there? The January 6th committee worked hard to hide the answer to that question. We do know from contemporaneous videotape that a mysterious figure called Ray Epps encouraged the crowd to go into the Capitol. For some reason, Epps has never been indicted for that. But there's no question he did it. We need to go into the Capitol! Under public pressure, the January 6th committee finally interviewed Ray Epps. Epps told the committee that he never entered the Capitol and therefore never committed a crime. His text messages showed that at 2.12 p.m., he boasted to his nephew that he had, quote, orchestrated the protests at the Capitol. He admitted he helped get people there. Yet, curiously, congressional Democrats consider Ray Epps an ally, not an insurrectionist. Tonight, we can tell you that at the very least, Ray Epps lied in his sworn testimony to the January 6th committee. Epps testified that when he sent the text messages to his nephew, he had already left the Capitol grounds to return to his hotel room. That is not true. The surveillance footage we found shows that, in fact, Ray Epps remained at the Capitol for at least another half an hour. You're seeing that on your screen now. What was Epps doing there? We can't say, but we do know that he lied to investigators. The January 6th committee likely knew this too. Democrats had access to the same tape, yet they defended Ray Epps. No honest investigation would do that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The Democrats defended Ray Epps. Obviously, this is entrapment. Well, all right, let me, in my opinion, this is entrapment. This is amazing. And we have journalists, so-called journalists, that aren't even curious. They just seem to have these political, this political bias, this political bent towards the left. Even in the way they frame their questions, they're not serious. They're not out to get answers. They're out to try to persecute Republicans and our conservatives. We saw that with Menu Raju of CNN. What a fake journalist. Bunch of commies. Uh, that's uh, Listen, that, 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 that's what they've become. All right, last video that I want to play you real quick. Uh, and perhaps I'll get onto these. I wanted to talk to you about this. SoFi is following this lawsuit to continue uh, student loan repayments. Let me just, uh, what I'll do is just quickly opine on this. And then I want to close out with uh, this video. And perhaps I'll get into this uh, more uh, tomorrow. Um, 
But let me just share these with you real quick. Um, if I could, if I could find them. Uh, so, all right. So SoFi is a, sorry, still working with my formerly fingerprinted. Okay, here we are. Uh, my formerly fingerprinted fingertips here. All right. So SoFi files lawsuit to continue student loan repayment. So SoFi Technologies is asking a federal court to order repayment by borrowers who aren't eligible for student debt cancellation under the terms of the Education Department's debt forgiveness plan. Millions of Americans with student loans haven't needed to make a payment on their debt since March of 2020. Um, that's three years, guys. That's three years. These people have borrowed money, chosen to borrow money, and they haven't had to pay it back. If you're concerned about inflation, and 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 we know the Fed is going to raise interest rates yet again. They're warning um, that perhaps we need to get these people to pay their student loan debts back. I'm sorry. So this company, I'm in full agreement with them. They should be asking for people to pay their freaking debts. How are they going to be able to sur to survive as a business? How are they going to be able to pay their employees? I I, I, I mean, this stuff is insane. This is there's been eight extensions that the Biden administration has allowed. Or at least this is the eighth extension. Perhaps there were a couple under Trump, but there's been many more under the Biden administration since March of 2020, three years. So these people made their choices. This is liberty. This is freedom. This is what it looks like. You chose of your own volition to go to school and I don't need to be paying for you. And you need to pay the money back. You're supposed to be responsible. You're the ones that's going to graduate college, allegedly, and you're going to make more money than the average American, the blue collar worker. And you're telling blue collar workers, basically, I don't want to pay the debt back. And as a matter of fact, I want debt forgiveness. I want you guys, you know, the little peons, the poor and the middle class. I want you guys to pay for my college degree, as I make more money than you in the future. These are some sick, spoiled brats. Make them pay the money back. You chose to take out the loan. You pay it back. I don't want to pay your car note. I don't want to pay your house note. I don't want to pay any of your bills. And I for damn sure don't want to pay your college bills. That's on you. I didn't go. Listen, listen, true story. So I went to college on a Pell Grant. I went to community college, all right? I ended up dropping out. I ended up dropping out. So I went to community college, got a Pell Grant, and then I felt bad after I started turning to conservatism. I was like, I think I'm just getting this Pell Grant because of my skin color. Now, I actually got good grades. I was actually smart, except in history. I, I was horrible in technology. I got an A in history, but a, the, the the professor was like, you didn't turn in this work. So this work that I was turning in and it was actually being graded, uh, supposedly I didn't turn in. And like an idiot, I get so discouraged. I didn't even, I didn't even fight back. It really pissed me off. Um, and, but, but I got an A on all of these exams, weekly exams. But like he said, I never took the finals. When I took the finals, semifinals, whatever they were, and turned them all in. Anyway, I'm just ranting uh, at this point. But all of that to say, eventually I get to a point where I started going and I had to pay. Uh, and then I started going through a custody battle or fighting for a, a custody of my daughter. So between that and trying to fight for custody of my daughter, I simply couldn't afford it. So I had to drop out. I didn't expect anyone to, uh, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't take out loans at that point. I worked to pay for it. And I just said I couldn't afford it. Some of you are going to have to make that same choice. All right. Nobody should be paying your bills. That's up to you. This is America. You made the decision to go to college. It's on you. Well, let's it's see. on you, boo, as they would say. All right. Now, just real quick. And then we'll close out with this. I promise here, Gabe. Um, this whole thing with TikTok. Let me just read from the, the tip sheet real quick. Let me just read from the tip sheet real quick. Gabe, I think we'll save that uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre for tomorrow. Um, I'll go ahead and go off on that tomorrow. Where, 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 where is this on the tip sheet? All right. Uh, this was on the tip sheet as well. Biden supports bipartisan legislation aimed at banning TikTok. I'm all for banning TikTok. So I don't want you to think that that's what this is about. But I want to read parts of this 
uh, report from Bloomberg. The White House endorsed a bipartisan bill that could give the president the authority to ban or force a sale of TikTok support that could hasten passage or hasten passage and break a deadlock over how to address privacy concerns around the popular Chinese owned uh, app. So far, so good. The bill introduced Tuesday would give the president the ability to force the sale of foreign owned technologies. Er, pump the brakes. Why not Chinese owned technologies? You, you, th- this is the problem that I have with Republicans and Democrats alike. You go too freaking far. A single bill should, uh, should, 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 you should focus on a single bill, a single act. Ban TikTok. I don't need to look at foreign apps made by, uh, let's say, Italy or, uh, you know, parts of Europe or somebody that makes an app. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about China. You see how this stuff gets so convoluted? They always make things harder than they need to be. And I go on. Um, again, the bill introduced Tuesday would give the president the ability to force the sale of foreign-owned technologies. Um, also, it says um, applications, software, or e-commerce platforms if they present a national security threat uh, to U.S. users. All right, so I'm concerned about that because who presents a national security threat? If a conservative built some type of platform, uh, you know, somebody that was a uh, Trump supporter, are they a national security threat? You understand uh, this wording matter uh, matters. Words matter. This stuff just, it, it makes me, it drives me crazy. It says it doesn't mention Beijing-based ByteDance LT, uh, LTDs, uh, TikTok by name, but the video sharing app is the clear target. The, the legislation doesn't even mention, doesn't even mention uh, Beijing-based bite dance by name. They own TikTok. This is America for you. This is America for you. Corrine Jean-Pierre, we won't take the time to play it, but she said, basically told Peter Ducey that fentanyl deaths are... Uh, because of the work that the president has done, uh, uh, fentanyl deaths are at historic lows. Uh, guys, fentanyl is 50 times stronger than heroin. We have have uh, about 100,000 people dying in America, over 100,000 people dying annually uh, in America because we have a president that will not seal the border. The numbers have been rising exponentially under this moron in the White House. And you go to see we've had two Americans, four Americans get that two killed, two that are alive, because one of them wanted to go across the border to get some plastic or cosmetic surgery of some sort. And it's right in the middle of where they have this golf cartel, G-U-L-F, that are just killing people, kidnapping Americans and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't. I, I hear all these people calling for, uh, we need to go after the cartels. I don't know. I don't know if that's the answer. I, I, I know where I would start. I would plug the hole. I would just kill, I, I would just, uh, just, just seal the freaking border. How about we just start there? Start there. Seal the freaking border. And maybe if we seal the freaking border, the Mexican cartels will realize that they couldn't make as much money on human trafficking, so they would try something else. I don't know. Just a thought. Anyway, I appreciate you tuning in to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever uh, wherever you wherever you go to watch your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Carl Jackson Show, and Rumble. Really do appreciate you tuning in. Tuning in. Please don't forget to support our sponsors uh, today, MyPillow.com. Use the promo code CARL, uh, Pure Health. Uh, getliverhelp.com, getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl, getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl, getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl to reignite your energy uh, levels. You, uh, uh, That's where you want to go, getliverhelp.com forward slash Carl. And also don't forget our friends at 4Patriots, the number 4Patriots.com. Use the promo code Carl to get yourself a survival kit for your family. Make sure your family is safe and taken care of. All right, guys, until next time, do not grow weary, doing good. God bless you.